Welcome to the Neoprene Playmat. I'm your host, Matt Piak, and today uh, we're laying it all out. So as you probably saw in the description, I'm going to be looking at expansions today, and I'm actually going to be talking about why um, I really think expansions are, are a waste, why um, expansions don't really need to be made. Um, and now I, I hear some of you, I can hear your heart racing from here. Hey, what? No. My favorite game needs these expansions. It makes the game better. It makes it um, get to the table more often, and it lets me play my favorite games uh, more and in new ways, and it makes it more replayable. Um, and so, in theory, yes, that's exactly what an expansion does. Um, that's one of the reasons whenever a new expansion comes out, I always want it. I look at it, and I, it's all shiny, and it's sitting there on the shelf, oh, man, I love this game. These are all the things I love about this game. I'm going to grab this expansion, and hopefully this expansion makes it so that I can get this game to the table even more. Uh, and I, I do that. I buy it, buy the expansion. I do it in good faith. And then I find myself never getting the expansion out. And you might be asking yourself, what, wait, why is that? Why aren't you getting your um, your expansion out. You just saw it. It was super shiny. It was something you wanted. It's going to bring new gameplay to something that you you already love. Shouldn't that make it hit the table? Um, and the answer is sometimes. Um, if I'm with a group of people that have already played the original base game, if I'm with a group of people that have played the original base game and really enjoy the original base game, and feel like they've gotten enough out of it, um, then yes, maybe the expansion gets included. But at the same time, is that expansion even going to be something I like? Is it a twist on the, on the game that's going to work? Is it going to make um, the game I already love better? Um, the answer there is also maybe. It, it might do that. Um, but at the end of the day, most of the time, the people I've, I'm playing with haven't played the game enough to really want or desire to add more content to the game. They're still trying to figure out um, the base level of the game and figure out all the strategies and explore it. Even if I've played it a bunch, if I'm teaching a bunch of new people, I don't want to teach them um, an entire additional rule set unless it's something that really fits in cohesively. Now, that's not to say there aren't expansions out there that I, I like or that I teach right off the get-go. Um, but for the most part, it's not something I want to jump into. It's not something I am super excited about uh, get, getting into with, with new players or with somebody that's only played the game once or twice. Um, and so I look at my game groups, and we have multiple people that bring games to the table. It's not um, for a long time, it was just me, and I would bring whatever I wanted to play to our group. Our group didn't really have games, and um, I was kind of the the provider, the one that would kind of just curate all the games that we should play as a group and, and bring them in. Um, but now I've, I'm playing games with other individuals that have similar interest levels and even some that buy more games than I do. And the chance that we get to replay a game multiple times enough to warrant getting an expansion is super rare. Um, which means the games that I would play an expansion with, the ones that are going to get a lot of play are smaller, quicker games or are like head-to-head -head games. And some of these I've bought a lot of expansions for. You've heard me talk about Guardians. I have the only expansion that ever came out for that. Um, I have Ashes and I have most all the ex expansion content that's come out for that. Um, I'm missing, I think, the two latest, and I, I'm not in for the 1.5 update. But um, but when you're buying when you're buying those types of expansions, when you're adding additional characters and additional um, additional uh, content that just kind of takes the same game and just adds a little bit to it, rather than kind of changing the way games play, like some other board game expansions work. What ends up happening is you take you take this game that was set and had a certain balance, and people start having fun reworking all of the tools, and you get something called power creep. So what ends up happening is all of the newer stuff becomes more powerful than the older stuff. It might be more difficult to play or to really understand the, the entire concept of what's going on in that expansion, but it, once you have it down, 
the the other decks or the other content that's in the box can't compete. And so really you're not expanding the content, you are just providing different content because people don't go back and play the older stuff anymore because now it's not powerful enough to actually play against some of the uh, more advanced content that's come out in the future. Um, and so once again, it's not really an expansion. Maybe it's more of a sequel to the game. Um, and that's really unfortunate. There's a reason they're doing a 1.5 update to Ashes. And it's because if you look at the first people they made, like they had to offer a lot of errata just to make those make those Phoenix boards strong enough to compete against some of their later stuff. Um, it also made some of the content, I believe, less engaging and less fun. One of my favorite things to do with Ashes was to draft. Um, and once you get so many characters, especially with incorporating now power creep as well, um, when you're shuffling all these different cards together and doing the draft and creating new decks that way, um, what ends up happening is you get really unbalanced decks because if somebody gets kind of stuck with more of the older cards versus the newer cards, their character might not be as strong or um, there's just so much content it's overwhelming to the point where it's hard to kind of streamline a strategy in that draft. And so what I found myself doing was selecting certain decks to shuffle together to do a draft with rather than shuffling them all together as it as it recommends because there's just too much content. And so to make something coherent, you have to limit it down and scale it back. Um, and for the most part, we didn't really see a lot of mixing of, of two, two different... Uh, Two different eras, if you will, together because once again, there's that there's that power creep, and it's hard to it's hard to keep that all balanced. Um, but there are some good reasons for expansions. There are some things that make expansions good, and one of those is Kickstarter. Um, and the reason I think expansions are good here is not the reason you probably think I think they're good. Uh, and what I mean to say is that I'm not excited about new expansion content on Kickstarter because of the expansion. I actually am just looking for a way to get the game uh, in a second print run. Um, a lot of times these expansions come out. I don't even know if I like the base game. I've heard reviews and everybody's saying, oh, you got to back it, go all in, get the expansion, get the get the normal game. And then you'll have it all when it comes. I don't even know if I like the, the base game, though, so do I want an expansion for it? And then at that point, I'm going to get all this stuff in the mail all at the same time, and the expansions are going to be there, and I'm going to feel pressured to like read through all of that and try and get that to the table as well without ever enjoying the original box content to its to its full extent because I have this box, this expansion, just sitting on the shelf. Um, that said, it's great, though, because it brings another opportunity to get the, the base game. I am curious, if you know of any Kickstarters that have done this, please let me know. I, I don't think I've seen it um, in the time I've been on Kickstarter, but has any... Kickstarter just done a straight up relaunch. I've seen new editions come out and I've seen expansions where they where they add the base game to it as an option in the pledge levels. Um, but I've never seen just a, a relaunch of a popular game. Um, and I wonder if that would if that would be successful with no no changes, no iterations, just saying, hey, we know there was a limited number of copies of these in the first print run, so we're doing a, a second print run. Because really that's what I would like to see. I like the idea of getting more reviews out there, more non-paid promotions um, for these different Kickstarter games, or even having friends that have backed it that have given me their own personal reviews. And then looking at the game and deciding, ooh, maybe I'll go in on this next time it comes up. As it stands, a lot of times when it comes back on Kickstarter, that means it comes with an expansion. And Sometimes there's an option to just jump into the pledge manager and to just order the base game. Um, but a lot of times you have to get the expansion and then it's a negative thing again. The only reason I'm glad that there's an expansion being launched is because it gives me access to the first game, uh, the original game before the expansion. And so I'm often sitting there thinking, you know, do, do I go in, do I get this game? I have to get this expansion. 
which is going to cost me more money um, for a game I don't even know if I like yet. I've heard good things, but who knows? And so all of these expansions, they're great for publishers. Don't get me wrong. They bring games back to the table. They um, essentially get like a second wind of hype for a game. That's, that's why they do it on Kickstarter. That's why they always launch it with an expansion. When publishers, like recently, I, I think it was just on, on BGG earlier today, and Grand Austria Hotel is getting a is getting an expansion. And that game's been out for a while now, so it's going to breathe new life into it. People are going to be taking out Grand Austria Hotel again, and they're going to be playing through it, and then they're going to be saying, oh, does this need more? Do I need an expansion? A lot of people that are completionists are just going to get that expansion because they have to have it, and they have to have a complete collection. Uh, personally, I don't have the money or the budget to be a completionist as much as sometimes I'd like to be. Um, on the other side of that, though, too, I look at my collection and I say, I have all these games. I have a, I have a decent handful of expansions um, to different things, but for the most part, most games I don't feel like I need an expansion for. Um, Eminent Domain is a game that's in my top 15 games. It's a deck builder from 2013. Talked about it a little bit on the show here, but um, that game has had, I think, three or four expansions that have come out, and I haven't ever gotten one. And I'm still super happy if anybody says, let's play Eminent Domain, I'll pull that out and I'll, we'll play base game and we'll go and it'll be great. I don't feel like it needs more. Um, my favorite game of all time, 51st State Master Set. I have pretty much all of the expansions. I think I have all the expansions that have ever come out for that. And I am being a bit of a completionist because it's my favorite game of all time. But that said, I rarely ever get those expansions to the table. Um, even the expansions that were included in the master set, I don't even get to play those that much because I'm so often teaching this game to new players. And so all of this content, all of this additional stuff, while it's good and I'm sure it's taken a lot of time to play test and it brings that second hype to the game, just, I just don't think expansions are that useful. A lot of times when I'm looking at prices and looking at new stuff, I'm like, I'd rather try something new and like enjoy this other game that I have that I've had for a while for what it is. I don't need to change the system. The only game I can really think of that just the expansions are the only way I would probably ever play is Raiders of the North Sea. If you've played Raiders of the North Sea, you, you probably know that essentially all the expansions came out at the same time the game did. Um, they're all in a similar size box. It seems very strange to me that they didn't just make an $80 game um, with the nice components and whatnot that had all that content in there. Um, I don't know anybody that's picking and choosing one of the expansions that they want to play. Everybody's kind of going all in, and that's why they recently did that, that big box for it. But to me, that didn't need to be expansion content. That game, without any of the expansions, is super basic worker placement, um, which is good. It's it's all right. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd play it if somebody asked me. I'm not reaching for it. But when you add both those expansions, that game is fantastic. That game is, is great. And there's a reason why there's so much buzz around it, why so many people like it. And so... In the, those circumstances, I don't want the expansion. Just give me the full game. Like, clearly that game was designed in its entirety before it was released, and it was ready to go with all of that, and they decided to cut it up probably for the for the cost because then they can hit this, you know, $50 price point, um, and then with discounts from Miniature Market or Cool Stuff or even Amazon, you can get it for, like, 35 to, I don't know, 43 bucks, something like that. And so... I made the game a lot cheaper, but like everybody feels like they need those expansions because part of the game is missing without them. If you just released it as a whole product, I feel like, at least for me, I would have I would have enjoyed that. There, that's one of the reasons Raiders of the North Sea isn't on my shelf. It's a pretty highly rated game for me, but orchestrating the the cash, the um, just everything, I'm always like, I gotta buy all three together i don't want just one because i want the full game and clearly that the game was designed as those three i don't know maybe shem phillips call me let me know if that's not the case but i feel like that was the full package that was everything that they had that's what they wanted to to present to the world and so 
why they would split it up, put it in different boxes, and then charge for each individual game, it just it made it a barrier to entry. It's it 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 literally is the reason it's not on my shelf. Um, I love the game. I love all the expansions. And frankly, I wish when they released this big box, they also released something or, I don't know, maybe had a Kickstarter or something where you could just get everything all in that box. Um, but it doesn't look like that's the case. I might end up going with Raiders of Scythia because it's a reworking that kind of puts all of it into one box, but a different game too. So I have to look into it a little bit more. But in general, though, going back to, to the topic here, expansions create problems for the consumer. They, they create an artificial buzz around a game and they entice you to buy more product, but you're buying a product that you're not actually putting into use. Um, ultimately, my goal is to, to spend money on games I'm going to play, things that I'm going to get out. That's how I get the most out of my budget. And so buying expansion seems to be a really inefficient way for me to get the most bang for my buck. Disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I would love to, to have a conversation with you. Um, what are some games that you've played that need that expansion? What are some games that you play that you've bought expansions for that you can't get to the table ever? Um, I'd love to dialogue with you. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.